My name is Lars Sundeborn. I am the Director of Government Programs for Hirsch Electronics. Hirsch Electronics is headquarters in Santa Ana, California, and we have a government liaison office in Western Virginia. We do access control, intrusion detection systems integrated with perimeter security, integrated with CCTV, DVRs for video assessment and, and uh, video surveillance. Lately, we have been very active and uh, ahead of the curve on the HSPD-12 and PIV program for smart cars. And the entire process is illustrated on our, uh, on our chart here, where we have an identity management system where a virtual identity is created on an individual. And that starts with the I-9 documentation, passports, driver's license, birth certificates, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, background investigations, check with the, uh, with the AFIS, the, fi the FBI fingerprint database. And once we have the complete virtual identity, it goes to adjudication. Are we or are we not going to issue this person a PIV credential? If yes, then the card is produced in a card management system. PKI certificates are loaded on here, cryptographic keys are loaded on this card, photo, fingerprint, biometrics, pin codes, personal information is loaded on this card. Then the individual is called back to the place where the process started. Now the card is ready and we need to make sure that the person that it is issued to is indeed the same person that the process started with, you know, two or three months ago. So the person is called back up and the card is issued and activated. And that follows then both credential possession, physical attributes, which is a biometric, and knowledge, which is a PIN card. With this, we can bind the individual to the credential. And then at the local level, a security director can assign physical access privileges to the individual and link it to the credential. We do this with three-factor authentication, card, which is possession, PIN, which is knowledge, biometric, which is the physical attributes. And the process looks like this. I'll put the card in. The card and the reader with handshake, it extracts the, the uh, chewing, it checks the PKI, PKI the authentication key, comes back, says it wants my PIN, I enter in my PIN. The PIN goes to the card, it tells me to put my finger in. It captures the PIN and access is granted. At this point, data was transferred from this card over to our fiscal access control system. What we now know is that the person who came here is indeed the right owner of this card, that this person is indeed still employed by his or her parent agency, and that the card is not a fake. It is an authentic card that is still valid. So now we're going to see the data that was read off the card copied over to our fiscal access control system in the database. And that looks like this. It is a digital photo. It is uh, PIV card data. And we're downloading this now to the authorized areas for this individual. And we can now use this in our fiscal access control system in areas of different security levels. For the Department of Defense, there's a CAC card. And we do the same thing. There's a CAC reader here. We can use CAC with pin to card, and the card is read and access is granted. And uh, at the end here, we have been involved with the uh, TSA Transportation, or, uh, Transportation Security uh, uh, Agency on the Transportation Worker Identification Credential, the TWIC program. And this is the system that we use for that. This, we have been part of the, the TWIC pilot program, and our port is the Port of Long Beach. And the program has been going on for a number of years. It is now coming to an end, and it has been very successful. So as you can see, Hirsch Electronics covers all the bases on what current and future government requirements uh, are. And it is uh, our job in the government program group to stay on top and abreast all what is coming so that we can feed this information to our engineering and development people so we build the solutions that the government needs.